Shamari, for that. Thank you. An update on all you saw today, if you could. Well, Shep, thank you for having me. We just actually received another one of those emergency alerts on our phone when you were speaking, reminding people about the 6 p.m. curfew that has been enacted by D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser. I am on the east side of the U.S. Capitol on the Senate side. And as you can see, there are two officers here along with several officers throughout the area. And they have their tactical gear, their visors, the shields, their batons, making sure that people do not breach the fence right here. NBC 4's Shamari Stone live outside the Capitol. Now, Shamari, how tight is security there tonight? Have you ever seen anything like it? Shep, I've covered at least three inaugurations, and I have never seen anything like this leading up to inauguration at least a week before. Take a look, for example. I'm six foot two, Shep. Look at this fence right here. This is the unscalable seven foot fence. And my photographer, Brooks Merriweather, can come down here. I just want to show you each fence is interlocked right here. There's a bolt and up at the top, another bolt. And on the other side of the fence, come right over here. You can see these National Guard troops. They are standing here, making sure that no one jumps over this fence. Hi, Shamari. Well, good evening, Shep. We have new information. The Arlington Memorial Bridge closed approximately two hours ago. Also, we found out that in Virginia, the Theodore Roosevelt Bridge, the Interstate 395 Bridge, and the 14th Street Bridge is expected to close at 6 a.m. on Tuesday, a day before the inauguration. Shep, and that gives an example of the heightened security here in our nation's capital. Imagine permanent fencing around the U.S. Capitol, similar to what's behind me. Just the thought upsets some people who live out here on Capitol Hill. They do not want permanent fencing around what they describe as the people's house. On a chilly night in our nation's capital, the seven foot unscalable fence topped with barbed wire still surrounds the U.S. Capitol grounds. Three weeks after pro-Trump rioters stormed inside. Kathy Flanagan and her daughter Julia hope the fence isn't permanent. My friends and I have run down this route around the Capitol for 20 years every morning, 6 o'clock, 6.30 in the morning, so we won't be able to do that anymore. I think it's awful. But acting U.S. Capitol Police Chief Yonanga Pittman is calling for the Capitol to have permanent fencing and more security to prevent another riot. She says in a statement, quote, in light of recent events, I can unequivocally say that the vast improvements to the physical security infrastructure must be made to include permanent fencing and the availability of ready backup forces in close proximity to the Capitol. I don't like the fence either. Julia has fond memories on the Capitol grounds, especially when she thinks about this weekend's possible snowstorm. It's like I've gone sledding here when I was younger. D.C. Council member Charles Allen opposes a permanent fence. It's just the wrong response to, to what the problem was. I mean, Shamara, you were here on January 6th and you saw the failures of what took place. The failures are inside. You know, they're just using this as an excuse to, to grab more land, take away public access to, to the people's house. It's a great loss for the community. Acting Police Chief Pittman says she welcomes internal and external reviews of Capitol security. She plans to work with Congress over the coming weeks and months on ways to improve security at the Capitol. Shep. Shamari, thank you. Shamari Stone, live near the scene on Capitol Hill. Shamari. Well, Shep, right now there is a heightened state of security here at the U.S. Capitol. You have National Guard troops, D.C. police, and U.S. Capitol police. You have tourists from all around the nation, from L.A. to New York City, who are actually in town for the cherry blossom. Some of them were gathered near the Capitol when this happened. And now there's a sense of disheartening. People are very upset, somber, after hearing about what happened to U.S. Capitol Police Officer William Billy Evans. He joined the force in March of 2003, an 18-year veteran. There was a procession from George Washington University Hospital to the medical examiner's office. Many of them are asking themselves, how can this happen again when they think about what occurred on January 6th during the insurrection? And here you have today on a Friday, Easter weekend, another incident here at the U.S. Capitol.
Now, police say that this suspect, 25-year-old Noah Green, slammed his car into Officer Evans and another officer, and they say that he jumped out with that knife, and investigators say that he attacked them, and that is when police then fired their weapon. That second officer, Shep, right now is at a hospital. He's being treated for not life-threatening injuries. But again, right now you have extra patrols here at the uh, Capitol and near at First Street Northwest and Constitution Avenue, there's actually a barricade. Now, with this extra sense of security, it was supposed to last through Memorial Day weekend, and it now could be extended after what occurred today. Shep? Shamari, thanks. Get to NBC4 Washington's Shamari Stone, who's live on Capitol Hill for us tonight. Hi, Shamari. Hi, Shep. Security is very tight around the Capitol grounds. You look right over here, you see signs like this one that read, area closed by order of the United States Capitol Police Board. Take a look at this fence. I'm six foot two. This thing is at least eight feet. And it has very sharp edges within here if you try to climb it. Even if you did make it across the fence, security is heightened. And take a look down here, concrete barriers. Extra reinforcement. This is what we're seeing all throughout areas around the Capitol. And for example, right over here, you have a United States Capitol police vehicle preventing people from driving down First Street Southwest with their cars or trucks. They are not allowing people to even jog or ride their bikes down here because they say this is not a typical time here at the Capitol. You know, I was listening to your show and you were explaining how people were able to get access to the U.S. Capitol. I want to show you something. Look at this right here. This is like a bike rack. You can see that it's moving. And what happened, I was here. We can roll video. This is when people knocked this rack over and then stormed the steps at the U.S. Capitol. Many of them angry. They say that Trump, without any evidence, uh, won this election.